Um, and so you're going to enjoy this. I hope that you get a lot of a lot of things out of this. Please make sure that you are uh, paying attention. You can turn on your camera if you would like. You definitely can unmute um, if there's conversations or um, questions needed to be answered and feel free to put your questions in the chat if needed. All right, so Shade, I'm going to hand it over to you and thank you so much for joining us again today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It is an honor to be here. Shout out to Ms. Craig and Asua and all of the people that have made this moment happen for me to be with you. I am a proud alumni of the Delaware State University. Um, I graduated in 2010. 2010. Um, Sorry, I heard some echo. Okay, there we go. I graduated in 2010 with a degree in English education and a minor in psychology. And I had the best time of my life at DSU, y'all. I'm not going to lie to you. I did not want to go to DSU because I lived in Dover, was from Dover. And I was just like, ah, I want something different. I want to experience something different. But going to DSU was the best decision I made. And I am just so grateful for my time there. So let's just jump in. I want to have a real talk conversation with you. I know that we are zoomed out, PowerPointed out. So I just want to just talk to what I consider to be family today about social media and communications. Um, as Ms. Craig stated, uh, I did have I do have a career in public relations and I have a consulting firm in which you offer all those services. In addition, I'm a lobbyist for our state education. So I deal with the government and the political side as well. And knowing how to communicate effectively and a variety of rooms and platforms is critical to your success. And so what I'll open up with saying is, when you stepped onto DSU campus, when you made the yes to your next level of greatness, there's a way that you have to communicate that shows that you want a new level. And so what was okay to do on social media and TikTok and things back when you was in high school or hanging out with them, that was great for that season. But now that you have stepped up and said yes to college and yes to being great and yes to really walking in who you're destined to be, your communication has to, has to meet and match in that level. And so I encourage you that what what Facebook and social media is supposed to do for you is supposed to be brand development. It is not supposed to be a place where you use as a diary that you kind of go and you make it something that it's not, that you are building your brand. I get 90% of my calls for speaking engagements, for opportunities from LinkedIn and Facebook. And so that tells you that people are watching that. And if I was going to, I can't afford to be careless with that platform because I know what I want out of life. And so I say that same thing to you is that I want you to really rethink how you're using social media. Are you using it in a way that is really representing your brand and who you are? And listen, you're still young in the game and you may not have a brand yet per se, but I want you to be authentic. I want you to be true. I want you to share some, like my mom tells me, save some, share some. You don't have to tell it all. They don't have to know everything, right? So I really want you to just begin to think about how can you rebrand your social media pages to reflect what it is that you want out of life. And so for me, I eventually want to be fully working for myself. And so when people go look for me to do contracts and things of that nature, I want my social media to reflect the baddest chick in the game, right? The girl that knows how to get it done. She's going to have fun while she's getting it done. She's well connected. She got the skills to get it done. Not somebody that's on the couch eating Cheetos or watching Real Housewives of Atlanta when I get a few five minutes, right? Someone that's, that's who I am and I don't hide that. But on social media, Everything isn't for everybody. So I want you to save some and then also share some. So that's all I'm going to say about social media because I really want to really get into communication. If you see me looking down, I'm looking down at my phone um, because um, th th those are where my notes are. But let's get into communication. What is an effective communicator? And so you don't have to come off um, video or anything of that nature. But I want you to think about, let this reverberate in your mind. What does it mean to be an effective communicator? We all have that one person in our world who's like, Lord Jesus, I got to decode this and resend this and her feelings are going to be hurt if I say it this way. So let me go back and retype it. Let me let me let me write it and then go back. So we all have that one person in our world that no matter how nice or how we craft a message is going to somehow hit them in a way. And what I say to us as communicators, it is still my responsibility to communicate effectively. If it hurts your feelings, I did something wrong on my part. Because effective communication is not just writing a message, it's making sure that the message is received in a way that the other person gets it. And so if there are barriers in our communication where you're communicating with someone and they don't get it, I got to check myself. And I get it. 
people receive things how they want to receive them. But in a professional setting, in a more elevated setting, that is very important how you communicate to people. And so let's just go down some things that I feel as though will help you on your communication journey. Know your message. When you are doing public speaking, when you are doing email, when you're doing text message, know your message, right? I'm the chick that my family hates to text because I'm real flowery. Hi, beautiful. How are you doing today? Hope you're having a wonderful day. And all I want to know is what time is family dinner? And they're like, sis, just put in the chat what time is family dinner? Because I want to be so flowery. I want to set the tone and all that stuff. But the message that I want to get across is simply what time is family dinner, right? So there are some atmospheres and some ways that you communicate that you need to be direct. You have to know your audience. My little brother, big brother, mom and dad, I'm like, did y'all get my text message? They'd be like, yeah, we saw some long message. What did you want? Right? Had I just put in the text, what time is family dinner? It would have been received a different kind of way. And so as you know your message and you know your audience, you have to communicate in a way that's effective to them. That little cute flowery message is good for my girlfriends, right? They love it. They enjoy it. That We in the group text all day long. But when I want to Communicate something quickly, knowing my audience really matters. So know your message. What are you trying to relate? When I go and speak in public atmospheres and with a, with lots of people, if I'm talking to teachers or if I'm talking to legislators, my conversation's different, right? How I communicate is different. When I'm talking to business people, they don't want this real talk setting. They want PowerPoints, they want numbers, they want data, right? So I know that my message has to be concrete in that way. When I'm talking to students, when I'm talking to family, I can be a little bit more informal. I can take my time presenting because I know the message I'm trying to convey. And today the message simply is just to level up in your communication. So know your message. Deliver your message in the proper context. When we're messaging, when we're emailing, you know, I, my assistant at work, she sent me a message, y'all, with like 16 exclamation points. I didn't know if she was happy. I didn't know if she was mad. I didn't really know what she was trying to convey to me. All I saw were those 16 exclamation points, and I didn't even read the whole message. I'm like, what is Yvonne trying to tell me right now, right? So sometimes when you're delivering a message, you have to make sure that it's in the proper context. And I love emojis. I think all that stuff is cute. But when you're trying to deliver a message, sometimes less is more. And really, in this day and age, we're so tired of reading emails that say, good morning, Sade. I pray this finds you well. Yes, I'm well. What do you want, right? <laughs> good morning, Sade. I pray Pray all is well. Yes, sis, all is well. What do you want? Get right to it, right? So sometimes you have to know, deliver your message the proper context. You have to know who you're communicating to. And it's okay, y'all, to be direct in messages. It's okay to say, good morning, Sade. Was wondering what time the meeting started and what you needed from me. Great. Good to the point. Because as you evolve your professional career, unfortunately, be People don't have time to read a million and one messages, whether it's text, email, letter writing, whatever. Get to the point. But know how to deliver your message in the proper context and using the proper placement of emojis, uh, punctuation, all that stuff matters. And so I encourage you, if you have the opportunity to kind of um, freshen up on your English while you, if there's like an English class or English workshop that you can take while you're in college, I'm, listen, I say go for it because it will really help you as you communicate, especially that we're especially because we're in such a digital world that it's important to know how to communicate with different people. And, and here's the thing, y'all. When people email me about jobs and there is a million and one, it's a million and one words in the body of the email, then you got 15 attachments. Raise your hand if you're reading that. I'm like, next, right? So you have to know your audience. You have to make sure the message game properly there. There's a way that you communicate with your friends and family that's different from how you communicate with your professor. Real talk. Your professors have probably 500 of you. And so although they want to take the time to build relationships with each and every one of you, it's impossible. And so when you go to your professor, know what, know, go in with the ask. Go in with your greeting. Hey, how you doing, Professor Crosby? Hey, was wondering if I get extension on the project. And this is my reasoning why. Go in with the message. Go in with an ask. And listen, saints and friends, Everything cannot be sent to me in a text message or email. There are some conversations that have to be in person. That's relationship-wise. That's professional-wise. There are some times I'm in the middle of writing a text message or email that I'll say, you know what? No matter how nice I send this, no matter how many times I put my flowery, beautiful words in, it's still going to be received in a way that this person may not get it. Let me pick up the phone and call them. That's communication too. I know for some of us, using our phones is a little ancient. I'm a text queen myself. 
But sometimes we have to have those conversations on the phone or in person. Business deals, for those of you that are um, business um, involved in your major's business, the best deals that I've ever made with, happen with people at a networking event, in person, at Starbucks coffee, in person. There's so much more you get out of a person when you're taking the time to really have a conversation. Everything cannot happen digitally. And as you are getting more comfortable and coming out of this pandemic, I encourage you to have some of those study groups in person, have some of those conversations in person, get to know people before communication can even start. And I forgot to mention this. Relationships is number one. When you have a relationship with who you're communicating with, that relationship would teach you how to communicate with someone. And so if it's always a miscommunication, if it's always an issue with it, hmm, let me think about the relationship that I have. To be very real with y'all, I have someone on my team that, you know, when you start a job and you start a career, you really want those people to be your family because the truth, is, the truth be told, you're with them more than you're with your family. And so coming from being, I'm a former teacher, former principal, did PR for a while, Coming from a background where everyone was like family to me and stepping into a very political government world was different for me, y'all. And so when I communicated with people at work, you know, I am a nice person. I'm high energy all day long. But I realized that I had to put some boundaries in my communication because y'all are not my friends. And I think sometimes when the lines are not clearly defined on what type of relationship this is, the communication gets blurred. And so when I know that you're not my friend, I'm not mad when you send back the no, period, yes, period, or you don't respond because you're not my friend. I don't expect anything from you. And so as you matriculate in your communication, the first thing I want you to do is to define the relationships with these people in your life. And that will help you become less offended. And so when people on the teams that I work with, politicians that I work with, if they don't respond, if they, if they take weeks to respond, I'm not offended because there's not a, there is a bounty that I put in my heart to guard my heart from getting upset and looking at you differently. Bro, you busy. I get it. Or you saw it and you didn't respond. It's okay. No response was needed. And so when you protect yourself in that way, then when you, the way you communicate is going to be so effective. I'll give you another example. I love my assistant to the end of the world. But sis, at 7 o'clock at night, that's your cutoff. I don't care. I don't care what's happening. I don't care what's going on. That is the cutoff for me. You can send me messages, right? but I'm not gonna respond until tomorrow. And so even as you're developing your communication style and what works best for you in, in this season of your life, have those boundaries. Everything cannot be work. Everything cannot always be the intensity of school life and all of that. Have boundaries and what's gonna happen. When you go out with your friends for dinner, y'all, we're not talking about the project today. We're just gonna enjoy these appetizers and this good time. Have those boundaries. And when you have those boundaries in your relationship, the way that you communicate with people will be so much more effective because the proximity of the relationship is cleared. Y'all know it. Y'all know y'all didn't tell homeboy, homegirl, we done, it's over with, I don't wanna talk to you ever again. And you still texting right? You still send a message to other people. So they don't take you serious. So your feelings are constantly being hurt under attack because you haven't defined the relationship. Define the relationship and watch the consistency of the communication improve immediately. Take me for my word. So know your message. Deliver your message in the proper context. Know the relationships in your life and how to communicate with them. Make sure you are understood. And so if you have to send a message or you have to communicate with someone, I call them courageous uh, conversations. There will be a time in your life that you're going to have to have a courageous co conversation as young leaders. And so the gist of that conversation is to make sure that whatever is being asked and understood, you don't have to like it, but did you understand the request that's being asked of us as a team, as a person, as an individual? I didn't like my mom telling me when I was growing up the TV had to be off at 10 o'clock or whatever, but it was understood at 10 o'clock, the TV is off and I can sing myself to sleep or whatever, but it was understood. I didn't like it, but it was understood. I didn't like the fact that, you know, there's a way, like we work remote sometimes. And so there's a way when we work remote versus in the office, but it's understood if I'm working remote, I may not be as easily available to respond all the time. It's understood. It's understood that for instance, today I had a speaking engagement this morning. And so I'm getting messages and emails all over the place 
and I sent back a one word response to my assistant. She understood because Shadi's at an event today speaking. She can't give me a long answer today, but the gist of it is you're approved to go spend the money to buy whatever you need for the office. So always make sure your message understood. And here's the thing as leaders, it matters how you receive. I said this when I opened, but as leaders, it matters how the other person receives the message. Make restoring people's dignity and communication your number one priority. They'll do anything for you. It matters. It matters if I text Yvonne a one word sentence is yes. And then later that later that day, she says, you know, I felt some way about your, your yes. What did you mean by that? Oh, Yvonne, let me clarify. We're never above that. That's effective communication. It matters how you receive the message. It matters how my response made you feel. And if I, the sender of the message, did not send it in a way that you could understand or receive it, that is, it's the onus is on me. And so never be afraid, never be above reproach that you can't go back and say, you know what, my bad, I was short in the message. I didn't miss it this time. Let me do a better job communicating. It matters. Make sure you are understood because we all know, we all know what happens when black, when boundaries are blurred and when there's miscommunication. The, the longest distance is miscommunication. The biggest misunderstandings come from miscommunication. The reason we still not talking to our third grade, whatever, is because of miscommunication. The reason we don't deal with a certain type of people is because of miscommunication. The reason why we don't go that particular route or whatever is because of miscommunication. And the only way to solve miscommunication is to first take responsibility in, in, in my part, but to also make sure that the next time I communicate, I eliminate that barrier. So it's important that your message is understood. I was at an event today and the lady said, repeat back to me what I said. I'm like, lady, we are not in second grade. But it was so funny to hear what everyone said back to her. She was like, no, that's not what I said. <laughs> right? How many times did that happen in our world? Like, we're like, no, that's not what I said. What I said was, what I meant was, so make sure the message is being understood. I also want you to adopt a healthy communication style. And so communication styles are different for everybody. Um, I am a communicator. I do a lot of public speaking, a lot of talking, a lot of email, a lot of texting. And my communication style is if you can text it, please do. I do not like to talk on the phone, but I love to be in person. Right. So I would take um, an e I would take going out to lunch or coffee over you sending me a long email. Right. I love in person engagement. That is my communication style because I am a I like to feel I'm an energy girl. Like I can tell what the real intent is. I like to feel your vibe. I like to know where we're going, how we move in. So my communication style is very in person. I am not direct. I think people that I struggle with people that were direct for years, but now I get it because I'm now that person that's super busy and I need for people to be direct, but I'm a very conversationalist. Let's talk about it. Right. And so as you are elevating in your careers, as you're elevating in who you are um, and your at college, it's important to, to know what is your communication style, because again, when you know who you are and you know the relationship with the particular person you're communicating with, all those blurred lines go away. And so you become an effective communicator. And so my communication style is I would much rather, Danielle would probably get a, Miss Craig would probably get a quicker response out of me if she said, Charlie, let's get together at my house for dinner and talk about the project for the community versus, hey, girl, let's get on a Zoom and talk about it, right? Because I like to be in person. I like to engage. I like that part of it. Everyone is not that. And if you're not that, you're totally fine. But really understand what is your communication style? How do you best communicate? And for me, after a long day of work, like when I get done, with, I have another meeting tonight. And so when I come back to my house at 8 o'clock tonight, I don't want anybody to talk to me. I don't, want, I don't want anybody to talk to me. I don't even want Real Housewives, my little outlet that I watch to talk to me. That's me because I'm peopled out. That's my communication style because I've been engaging with people all day that I don't want to talk to anybody. So if someone texts me tonight or calls me tonight, I'm not going to answer. But that's my right as, a, as, as someone that is, is modeling and showing people how I best communicate. So know your message. Make sure you're understood. Deliver your message in proper context. We talked about using appropriate emotions and tones. I want to remind you that it's okay to not respond immediately, whether it's an email, a conversation, whatever. It's okay to not respond immediately. That one of my mentors, Drew Sears, teaches me seven second pause. Take seven seconds before you respond. 
There is power in the pause. That's a whole sermon in itself, saints. There is power in the pause. Because what happens is when you take a moment to just be like, and really hear that sometimes the emotion that the person is giving you is not even for you. So you're ready to fire back. You're ready to be like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, you forgot who you was talking to. Oh, I'm going to be hurt. Oh, you're going to hear me today. And what they really said wasn't even for you. And so when you take a moment to pause and to say, oh, wow, interesting. I'll get back to you. When you're unbothered, whether it's good or bad, it's amazing. Let me tell you a little secret. One day, many of you are going to be negotiating million dollar deals. I just speak that over your life. You're going to be, you're going to be negotiating million dollar deals, making things happen in your community. And you're going to get to tables where people are going to be throwing money at you. And the, what I want you to remember is I want you to pause. Number one, all money isn't good money. And number two, is you want to make sure that that's the opportunity for you. And so when people see that you pause an opportunity, it is more amped to find you. When you hungry and thirsty and always got your hands in, in, the, in the barrel, we like, nah, on to the next. But your nonverbal communication of pausing is going to open up so many doors for you because that teacher, that tells me that you're someone that calculates and measure what you're going to commit to. And I can trust you with a million dollars because you're just not going to be out here just Live, living it up, right? And so I encourage you that sometimes no response is the best response. And you're talking to a recovered comeback girl, okay? For someone that was like, oh no, wait a minute, hold up. Who, what, huh, what, right? Oh, I got a response for everything. I'm hardly ever speechless. But as I have matriculated in my career working with government officials and working with this one and that one, I realized the, I was missing. I was missing my own blessings doing this all the time. And some of that is insecurity that we have got to grow out of as we go to next level communication. There is power in the pause. Take your time. Get back to them. Isn't it powerful when when someone tells you you give them an opportunity or you tell them something great and they say, "I'll let you know." You're like, "Let me know." You got that many options. You got to let me know. I'll let you know. And like, you're like waiting for them to call you because you're like, yo, I got to, this is the one I want to give it to. I'll let you know. There's power in the pause. There is something powerful about silence and taking your time to respond. Be, you know, I had an email to write, <clears throat> excuse me. I had an email to write to a particular elected official about a bill that they're trying to pass in Delaware about charter schools. And I'm hot about it. I'm mad, y'all. I was like, oh, they're not about to do this to these charter schools because I ran a charter school before and I know what it takes to run a charter school and ain't none of these people ever been in a classroom before or oh, they're going to hear what I have to say or oh, they're going to hear me today. I'm typing away, y'all. I'm going at it. I'm ready. And the small, still voice of mine said, delete it. I was like, nah, 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 God. This ain't the one I'm going to delete. They're going to hear me today, Okay. Y'all went to send the email, the email bounced back. <laughs> Cannot be delivered to sender. Too many, too many messages in this inbox. And so today, in the middle of a speaking engagement I did this morning in Newcastle, I get, it, I get a phone call from this particular legislator saying, Sade, I got to meet with you tomorrow before we, go into this, before we go into our house at meeting because I know that you're going to coach me what to say because we can't let this bill pass. Had I sent that angry message, y'all, had I went back and forth the email with this legislator, do you think he would have called me today and said, let's talk? He'd been like, nope, she the angry one, can't deal with, need somebody level-headed. You know what I said? No problem, sir. I'll let you know when I'm available to talk tomorrow. I'll be right there, y'all. 12.15, he want me to 1 o'clock, I'll be at the door 12.59. You hear me? But it's because I took a moment to say, hold up, wait a minute. Let me use the appropriate emotion and tone right now. Let me get it together. And and and, and God blocked it because I, I, I was going against my feelings. Thank God it was blocked. But part of communication is also knowing when to say, maybe not this time. Because let me tell y'all something. Karma misses no one. That's That's good or bad. It misses no one. And so your opportunity will always come for you to justify yourself in terms of communication. 
And then the last one, well, there's two, but the last, the next to last one is be a not be a good nonverbal communicator. Like we just talked about, silence is powerful. Your posture is powerful. Your poise is powerful. I know we're not talking about branding, but I wanna I wanna say this: how you carry yourself and what you represent matters more than anything. In communication, more than anything. When I was a charter school leader, I was an effective leader. But what those kids remember most about me, Miss True, you was always fly. And I wasn't getting dressed for them. I look nice because that's just how that's how I want to look. But it matters. They were more amped to listen to me because I carried myself in a way that it showed that I respected Sade. And so because she respects herself, I want to hear what she got to say. You know how it is. You know. You like being around people that take care of themselves. That, And I'm not talking about this fake aesthetically pleasing stuff, y'all. I'm not talking. I'm talking about a person that is well put together, that's poised. That when they walk in the room, the atmosphere changes, Right. Those are the people I'm talking about that carry themselves with dignity, respect, and they are integral people. They're not fronting for the gram. I want to hear that person. And so when you walk in a room, I want you to walk in in that same way that before you open your mouth, people want to hear what you have to say because of how you carry yourself. That when they go on social media, they're like, wow. When they read your reports and your research, they're like, interesting. When they when they're in your presence, you have something of value to add to the conversation. That's that's who you that's who you are. Because y'all got thousands upon thousands upon thousands of kids on that campus, but somebody encouraged you or you told yourself, I need to be in the room so I can up my communication so that I can be the one making some million dollar decisions. So kudos to all of you in here. And then the last one is be open to feedback. All feedback isn't bad. And so what my executive coach is teaching me is I don't have to agree with the feedback for years to be very transparent. For years, I was teased because I talked fast. And I talk fast because I'm passionate. I get excited to be in the room with people. And Dr. Betsy Nielsen, I don't know if she's still at DSU campus. She was my speech teacher. And the upperclassmen that terrified me of Dr. Nielsen, they were like, girl, she is, she's tough, yo. Like, girl, and, you, and you're a freshman? Why are you a freshman taking her class? She don't even accept freshmen in her class. Girl, good luck with that. So I go to bet, I go to Dr. Nielsen's class, terrified, y'all. I said, this is like going to eat me alive. So I'm a T. So how she does her speech class is that she goes down the alphabet. I'm a T. So I'm like, thank God, I probably won't go for two weeks. Well, Dr. Nielsen come in there and look at her roster. She said, who is this true one on my list? She said, you're a freshman? I'm like, yes, ma'am. She said, oh, you go first, freshman. I'm like, what am I going first for? She says, go up there and I want you to introduce yourself as if you're introducing yourself to the university. I go up there. I do what I thought I did. She, Everyone leaves. She comes to me. She says, you know what? You talk fast, but your money going to make you some money. Your mouth is going to make you some money. She said, stick with me. I'm going to get you right. And so I give so much credit to Dr. Nielsen, my college speech professor, for just seeing something in myself. People for years, you talk too fast, you're this, you're that, you're too passionate, blah, 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 blah. But those things have all worked together in my favor. And I take feedback. And so there are certain times that I have to remind myself to slow down. There are certain times that I remind myself, okay, you can be... When I talk to my... I mentor 200 teen girls. When I talk to them, I'm animated and I'm whatever. But there are certain atmospheres that I have to be a little bit more poised. And it's okay. But all feedback isn't bad. Feedback is to make you better. And so be open to feedback and communication. Ask someone, hey, how did I do with that report? Hey, read this email for me real quick. What you think? You know, hey, mom, was I too short in the message? Did you not get it? Ask for feedback. It's okay. All feedback isn't bad. And guard your heart that the person giving you the feedback, where are they in your relationship life? If they're over there, thank you, bro. Appreciate you. If they're here, receive it, hear it, hear what they have to say. But that's all I have. I want to hear from you guys. What are your questions? Anything you want to ask me about communication? It is a process. Take one day at a time with your communication. But let's start with the social media saints and friends. Let's just make sure that that is reflective of your next million dollar opportunity. If I had a million dollars to give to someone today, just based on your Facebook page, would I give it to you? That's the first communication. And number two, being a good listener. Before we even get to the other parts of communication, are you a good listener? So I want to open up, Miss Craig, I can open up for questions, if there's questions. Yes, feel free, you guys, to either come off of mute, or if you can't, you go ahead and put your questions in the chat. 
thank you, uh, Ms. Truitt. That, that was amazing. I have all five points. <laughs> we can always improve on our communication. And um, all right, thank you, Julie. Thank you so much for at least getting the the majority. So we appreciate you for attending. Yes. Yes. All right, um, Ajuri, go ahead. Hi. Um. So. I was listening to you and I heard that you said to like watch what you put on Facebook and different things. And like, I'm not saying I personally like post pictures or like I might post like a uh, track meet if I did good or anything like that. But some of the stuff I share might reflect negatively on me. And I want to know your point of view. Like is like if what I post or what I share that I think is important or that I think is something that everyone should know that at least there are my friends on Facebook, is that, can that be reflected negatively towards me or like my future? I love how you were having this reflective question of, you know, is it, is what I'm sharing negative? And I, and I think that the fact that you're asking yourself that is even a challenge for you to say, you know what, maybe not to post this, you know, maybe I'll just share this in a group text message. Maybe I'll share this in a different way. But when we have to ask ourselves, it's just kind of like when you're in the store in Target and your cart is filled with stuff and you going back and forth over the pair of shoes, doubt means don't, right? Doubt means don't. If you're having any doubts about posting something, sharing something, it means don't. There have been a number of times I would post something and go back and take it down because I'm just like, there was no need for that. Or that moment was between me and that person. Or, you know, why am I posting just because I haven't posted in five days or whatever it is. But I think that when you have doubt about what to post or even doubt in communication, it simply means the same nah, let me rethink this. It's not the time to post this or or whatever. And so I encourage you, there's other ways to share other than the social media. You know, I text my mom, I, I text my mom a picture today. I took a picture with someone who I love, adore, and admire. And I shared it with my mom because I knew she would be the, my hype woman. You know, I wanted to post it on social media, but that person is not a social media person. So I know they would be like, girl, why do you post that? But I shared it with my mom, right? And she is so excited to, to see it and whatever. And it felt good to share it with someone that I knew was going to be my cheerleader and not like, oh, here she goes, Flash and Corey Brooker, they can see no, whatever people say, who cares? But like, it's just like, that's an example of how you can also use your networks to support you as well. That was a great question though, but doubt means don't. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. And we have a question in the chat from Erie. It says, is social media necessary for professional reasons? So I do not think social media is necessary for any reasons. I think that if social media is a personal choice, I think it makes it easier for professionals to find you and to connect with you. But I feel as I truly believe that it's not necessary. And, I, and I'm saying that because I have someone that has spent the entire year really, really judging my need for social media, really saying it's a time for me to get off social media altogether. And the only reason, honestly, just I'm on social media is because I mentor 200 girls and most of them are on social media and they, they don't have phones. So like, you know how Wi-Fi is or whatever. So they're able to get on that that way. But no, that your your next opportunity could be anywhere you want it to be. You create it. And so email and texting and all that stuff is still available to us. The social media is one tool. It's not the end all be all. So if you are feeling like there are other ways that you want to stay connected, other ways you want to share your brand, absolutely. That social media is just one tool. And if you, you know, people go on fast, you know, and they, and they fast on social media. And I'm like, what happens? Like, I did that, you know, in December, I get off social media and the world still goes on. People still find me. People still connect with me. You know what I mean? So it's all about what you need for social media in this season of your life and, and connection wise. But you don't need social media to be to, to expand and to be who you are, that that was already determined at the beginning of time for you. And doubtless, I see your hand up so you can go ahead and unmute. So my question kind of goes hand in hand with what you already said, but I, I do, I try to, I'm very active on campus and I do a lot of uh, volunteer work, but I'm really just not active on social media. So should I have like a small section of social media where I can post about the things I'm doing just so that I have like, I, I, don't, I don't know, I guess proof that I am doing mm -hmm. things for community service? Um, and I would say take pictures and keep that stuff in your phone, in your notes section of your phone, so that when you do want to share that with 
you know, other opportunities and jobs, you can do that. Um, my pastor does not have social media and he has two of the largest churches in Delaware. And, but our church has a social media page. So when he wants to share or post things, whatever, in the name of United Church, he does it on our social media pages. So maybe it's an opportunity for you to partner with the other student organizations that you're on campus with. And when you're at an event or when you're engaging and volunteering, that you can kind of use that platform to share the work that you guys are doing collectively. That's one way as well. But I think that, you know, our phones are amazing. Your phone will create a photo album for you based upon the pictures that you take. And you can save those things and archive those things so that when you do want to share or someone asks for digital, whatever, you can use your phone to do that. Whether you have an Apple, Android, whatever. I mean, my mom's little phone can do it. You know what I mean? I don't know what kind of phone this got, but her phone can you know, can put things together for you in that way that I, I want to free us from feeling like social media has to be the only way for us to engage with people. I am blessed by social media because I get to see my friends and my family, people that I don't get to talk to every day. It's a blessing to me, but it's also been a distraction. And it's been something that if I spent less time on maybe one of these dreams that I'm praying and believing God for to happen it would happen a little bit faster if I took some time away from my social media time. And so it's really about what you need in the season of your life with social media. But social media is not the end all be all. And if there's other ways to partner with other organizations to share that, do that. But also use your phone as an advantage. You know, scrapbook, find a way to capture those moments so that way you're not feeling the need to be on there. Or like I do on my phone, there's a one hour limit for all social media, all put all together. So whether I'm on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, after I've been on any of those things for an hour collectively or individually, it goes, the icon goes away on my phone. So I'm not even able to get on social media because there's a boundary in place to protect me from being on it so much. I hope that answered your question, Dallas. It did. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Wow, an uh, app that will allow your social media to be timed. That's interesting. Okay, um, Brianna has her hand up. You can go ahead and unmute. Okay, hi. Um, I guess this may have been already sort of covered, obviously, because this is your topic, but would you encourage making a separate account for, for like professional reasons versus like a personal account? No, I think I... I say no to that because I believe that your brand is who you are collectively. And so there's no need to separate this or that. That's just me personally. So like people always ask me, why do you not have a true consulting page or of this page or that page? It's really because who I am authentically is true consulting, is girl talk, is Sade. And so I've chosen to have those things together. But there are some people that do separate that. And it's OK because they want to have that very clear boundary that in this space, I'm true consulting in this space, I'm Sade. But for me, I believe that your brand is who you can pride yourself of with all of that. And then also is more time, right? I'm blessed that I have a girl talk page and someone runs that. I, I have, there's no way I could do girl talk, my stuff. There's no way. So I think that whatever is the best use of your time is good for you. But at this stage of the game in college, I wouldn't have separate pages. I would have one page that um, kind of comp comprises who you are. LinkedIn is totally different because LinkedIn is very strategic to being for business people. Like LinkedIn has been, is if you want a job, if you want to meet the who's who, then yes, you have a separate page for that. And that is the PR princess page that people see. Um, but I don't feel a need for that. It's too much time. It's another distraction. I don't think so, but it's all about what your boundary line is and how much time you have to devote to managing two pages. I can tell you from experience from, from a PR person that's managed other people's pages that have all these pages, it's so time consuming. It's like, bro, we're putting the same thing on four different pages. Like just put it on your main page, right? So it all depends on what your needs are in this particular season of your life. But in this season for you, I would say one page is plenty. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm just going to do a plug that we have our LinkedIn Rock Your Profile session on Thursday at 11 o'clock. Okay, I need to be there. I need yes, to be there. I'll put the link in the chat <laughs> and you guys RSVP, RSVP to get the link. Um, uh, we had uh, Asua and then Ashur. Miss um, Truett, I appreciate you and I thank you so very much for this wonderful topic. I've been taking lots of notes and my quick question is this, you talk a lot about brand. How do you go about creating your brand and just making sure that your brand, like you said, matches who you are, personal, professional, but how do students go about making their brand 
um, and be effective in their brand communication. Yeah, you know, be, before we even get to brand development, the question that you have to ask yourself, students, is who am I? Right. And you have to be able to answer that question flat footed. You have to get in the mirror and be able to talk about who are you. And we all know professionals in, in this on the Zoom, on this call, we hate going to meetings and they ask you to introduce yourself. We're like, oh, my goodness, I'm Sade. I'm a, I'm a publicist. I'm Sade. I'm a lobbyist. But no, who is Sade? Who is she? Like, who are you? And when you can answer that question, you de- you then begin to develop a world and a platform that revolves around that. You know, I am the founder of Girl Talk. I am a lobbyist. I'm a family girl. I'm a beach bum. Like, if you're looking for me in the summertime, come see me in Rehoboth or in Aruba, right? Like, I'm a beach bum. I'm a community-driven person. I'm a developer of people. And so when you look at my social media, you see all of those facets about it. I'm a businesswoman, right? I'm someone that... God is everything to me. My faith is everything to me. And so when you look at my social media, you see that. But if I don't know who I am before those things begin to come out of me, then building a brand is just non-existent. And so you really have to think about who are you? And part of that is purpose. And honestly, y'all, when I was in college, I, I couldn't answer that question. I'm just I was just trying to get my degree. I was just trying to get out of school, figure out how to pay these student loans back. You know, that wasn't a that wasn't a priority for me, but it also wasn't a place where people were coming and talking to me a lot about brand and 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 purpose-driven life when I was in college. We were we were I was I was having too much fun, to be honest. But anyway, but I stayed on the dean's list, but I was having a lot of fun. But anyway, so you know, really think about who are you and then build from that. I know people that are in college, but they have like a photography business on the side. That's part of your brand. You know, I know people that are in college that they do in hair and nails. But they're like, Shani, that's hustle money. That's not my brand. So I don't want to share that with the world, right? So it all you have to really think about who are you? What were you put on this world to do? And it really, you really won't know that until you really sit with yourself and go through a little bit, honestly. But thank you for sharing that. So to develop your brand right now in college is to like your focus on your major and your career. That would be the that would be the basics of your brand is knowing, you know, what are my next steps after this? And I'm going to brand myself to that. I always knew I was going to be in education when I was at Dell State. So I was a part of every education thing I could be a part of. And at that time, there was, there was, I was not, I did not fool in my space. So I waited to uh, Facebook came on the scene when I, it didn't come on the scene until I was in college, right? And at that time it was only for college kids. And so the only people on there were college kids with our majors in the school we went to. So that was kind of my brand. Like, oh, she a DSU girl, she an education major. And then from that, as I began to develop who I was as a person, as a woman, other things came out of that. So that was a great question, um, Asua. Thank you for that. Thank you. A story, you can go ahead. Okay, so this is my last question. Um, so I have always been like the chunky girl. I've always been the one that like got bullied, made fun of, things like that. And so as soon as like track and field and weightlifting and everything, I you know, I've I feel better about myself. And so I heard you talking about, you know, like the way you carry yourself, the what like the things you wear that can be that can like brand you that can make you people look at you differently and like i i like it's summertime it's hot so like i don't want to be seen as oh she a hoe or excuse my language but like oh she does this or oh she's that just based on what i wear so like should i change that up just due to what other people think of me Or should I dress how I want only because I'm proud of what I've worked so hard to, like all the battles I've been through to create who, what I am and who I am now. Well, I am so proud of you. You go girl with your banging body and your banging personality and your banging energy. Like that deserves to be celebrated. And I'm so proud of you for, for taking, for, for for choosing you and putting you first and saying, you know what, I'm going to do this for me. So kudos to you all the way around the board. When it comes to representing yourself, I want you to always present your best, true, authentic self. And so I want you to be who you are, but I want you to, as my mom would say, save some, keep some. And so when you go to the beach, we wear what we wear at the beach, right? You wear your bikini, you wear your whatever. That's for the beach. When I go in the boardroom, I want to be respected as someone that's here to make some really good decisions. So I'm not going to wear the off the shoulder dress and my thongs and my butt jiggles, right? So I'm going to be more conservative and wear 
uh, it might be a fitted dress, but I'm going to have a suit jacket on it to kind of contour that is fitted. You know, when I'm out with my girlfriends, I may be a little bit more free and have on a crop top and some jeans because that's who I am and I'm proud of what I did. When I go to the gym, I might have, I go, I box every morning. And so I wear, my mom is so embarrassed. She don't even see me most days because I live, you know, she live across town. But why do you have that on at the gym? Mom, we are boxing. It is 100 degrees in here. I'm not in here to get nobody's attention. So I do have on these little skanky shorts and a tank top, but that's for the gym. When I go to church, I'm modest. So I think that you have to dress for the atmosphere and environment you in, but most importantly, you want to be taken serious. And I'm all about body positivity. I am a girl who was a full figure girl, been full figure my whole life. And so when I lost my little bit of weight, you couldn't tell me nothing when I put on a crop top. But at the same time, I'm not going to wear a crop top when I go meet with parents and teachers. You know what I mean? I'm not going to wear a crop top when I am around family, you know, that, you know, in a certain, in a certain setting. So I think that you have to be mindful of how you want to be respected. You want to be taken seriously in any environment that you go into. And so when you dress, you want to dress. One thing that my mom has taught me that has stuck with me, you want to be dressed for what you want to become. And so I call myself the bad chick. I am a, I had severe low self-esteem when I was at Dell State. And no one knew it because I dressed up and I always looked good because my mom taught me at an early age that as women, you there's a certain way you carry yourself. So even I, I was faking it until I made it, really. So at Dell State, I was always dressed nice and people always thought how good I looked, but inside I didn't believe that because I was chunky, I had gone through a horrible breakup, all the all the things that college brings you. And so, but I kept dressing and I kept putting myself into that. So now as a 30-year-old woman, I don't call myself the bad chick in the game to be arrogant, but I fought to become her. And so, yes, I am the bad chick in the game. When I look in the mirror, I do see a beautiful woman, a woman that I still want to lose 10 more pounds, but still that's who I am. And so I always dress like that, always carry myself like that, that even on bad days, I'm like, you're the bad chick in the game. And so the bad chick in the game is never going to embarrass herself or not represent herself in a way that she's taking serious. And I, and I'm, and I'm the I love fashion. And my second life, y'all, I'm going to be the Devil Wears Prada. Okay? I love fashion. I love to carry myself in the very, that way. But when I want to be respected, there's a way that I be respected. Tomorrow, I have to be with legislators all day. And so there's a way that I'm going to dress tomorrow because y'all going to take me serious. I'm still going to be cute and fly, but I'm going to be covered. And I'm going to be taken seriously. I'm going to have on a dress with pantyhose because I because that's the environment that that type of that's how they that's how they act. So when in Rome, you act like Rome, but I'm still going to be fly because that's authentic to who I am, but I might be a little bit more modest. So I say that to say that depending on the atmosphere that you're in, you adjust it, but be your authentic self. Be who you are. Be fly. Be fun. Be fashionable. Be daring because there's some little girl or even one of your friends that's like, dang, yo, because she's so fly like that she frees you to be myself. Be yourself. Honey, in a little bit, I'm going to be in, a, I'm gonna be in jeggings, I mean some um joggers and a wrinkled up t-shirt, okay? It's still the best chicken again because I'm just going to be laying around the house until I have to go to this meeting, right? So it's just like, you know, be true to who you are, but also know that when you want to be respected and taken serious, there's a way that you have to tailor and evolve yourself. And for me, I watched, I used to watch women that I admire. Like Michelle Obama came to our campus in 2008 and I watched how she carried herself when she came on campus. You know, I watch how Oprah carries herself. I watch how Taraji P. Hinton carries herself. You know, I watch how Beyonce carries herself. Like, there's women in my church that I admire, my mother, you know, that I admire. And I watch how they kind of carry themselves. Um, and that kind of is a good model for me. So that's a great question. I hope I helped you just kind of get a little bit more perspective on that. But respect yourself and be true to yourself, though, too. Thank you so much. I, I needed to hear that. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. All right, um, do we have any more questions? You can come off of mute or you can put them in the chat. Okay, uh, that being said, thank you so much, Shade. That was amazing. Thank you for having me. I had a blast. Yes, thank you, guys. Yes, just so I mean, amazing. Come back so we can be in yes. person next time. I know, fingers crossed, we'll definitely have you back in person, fingers crossed, okay. you know, praying that um, this the fall will be a time where we can all have come back together and be together, and we don't have to do this um, virtual stuff. But- um, You have to do great work, thank you so much. You, oh, you, you and your department you. and team are doing some great work that I wish that we had more of this when I was on campus. We. It was a different time, so we didn't have to be virtual and need so much of this. We were very engaged, but just thank you for what you're doing for these students. It is a seed that you're going to see the fruit of for a lifetime, so thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're awesome. Um, in the chat, I put the registration form for the okay. LinkedIn. 
So please, everybody, if you have not signed up already, I said 11 o'clock on Thursday. It's four. It's a four o'clock session. Um, so come and see us at four o'clock. It's from we have LinkedIn employees who will be doing this session. So directly from LinkedIn. So go ahead and, and register for that. Also, this core group right here. Thank you so much for uh, attending our session two. We have session three next week. Um, the topics are interview skills and resume writing. Um, so please be in attendance for that. Again, four out of five sessions, um, you get a certificate, a certificate of completion um, and a hundred dollar stipend. Everybody needs a hundred dollars, right? Um, we were able to get um, y'all know my my light turns off i'm in the dark i'm in the dark but um everybody can definitely use those funds so thank you again for joining us um i'm gonna leave it to mrs poe to be able um to say last words and Shade, there is a, a message in the chat for you they would like your instagram they want to stay connected Thank you so, 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 so much, Ms. Truitt. I'm, I'm ready for part two. I got to oh, hear you again. I love it. Uh, once a week. <laughs> <I'm serious. laughs> You're so encouraging. We thank you so much for spending the time to always uh, making time to give back. And so knowing that you um, grace the hallways of these buildings here on campus, and now you're um, pulling up our students. I tell you, I, I wish we had more alumni like you. So, and I, I sincerely mean that. So we definitely uh, look forward to actually meeting you in person. You know, we can just hang out and go to lunch, just not yes. talk about work. <laughs> yes. Just relax. So thank you so much. I want to thank everybody for logging in. Thank you, Asua. We appreciate you, Miss Ofosu. Thank you, Danielle. Danielle knows she's just a guru. There, it's, she's just a guru. I just, this is it. So, but we thank you and appreciate you, uh, Miss Craig. Did you um have? Are you having a drawing this today or no? No, not for this, you guys. If you want to get those DoorDash gift cards, we have them for the rest of the semester for our um, development sessions. So, okay. but because you're here, if you come to four, that's when you get that stipend of a hundred dollars. That's right. Thank you very much for reminding me. So, thank you, everybody. Yes, we do have a survey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you for reminding me. And it's right up on my screen. So y'all are on it. I appreciate you I for being dialed in and being ready. I appreciate here we go. Survey is in the chat. Um, this is pertaining to session two with Miss Shade Truitt. Please fill it out. Help us to develop this program even more as we um, go through this session and look to do this again in the fall for you guys. So thank you. Thanks. Have a great evening, guys. Good evening. You take care. Yeah, now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Good Thank night, you. guys. All right. We're always here if you need us. Yes, and finish the week strong. Yeah, you got this. Plus, I keep candy in my office. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to eat it all. Thank you, ladies. Have a good afternoon. Thank, Thank you. Have a good evening. Have a great yeah, one. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Stay safe and be well. Do you want me to stop recording for you? Oh, thank you. Here I am just looking at it. I got it.